Hi, I'm Matthew Sam, and today I have a question for you. Have you ever tried to install something at school or at work, but on your PC, but it keeps asking you for a username and password because you are not an administrator? Or have you ever forgotten your password and can't log on? Today I will show you how to work around those problems and be able to log on to any PC and install anything you want. So, let's define some requirements. The PC in question has to be running Windows. It can be any version of Windows, but it must be Windows. Also, uh, we must have physical access to the PC or laptop because we will be booting into its BIOS. And booting, instead of from the hard drive, we will be booting from a flash drive, which will contain the installation of Windows. We will not be reinstalling or reformatting Windows, but we will need to boot from something like, for example, the installation of Windows, or it can be Linux, a portable version of Linux, so that we can modify the files, the system files on the PC. The reason is so that we can bypass some security measures made by Windows and directly have system access to the PC. And then we will grant administrative access to our, ourselves. And that's how we will progress. Okay, so the first step is to create a bootable USB drive. In this tutorial, we'll use the Windows Media Creation Tool from Microsoft. One thing to keep in mind is that the creation tool requires admin rights to run, so it's best if you prepare the USB drive at home or on a PC that you have full control over. Also, the USB drive uh, must be at least 8 gigabytes in size. To download the Media Creation Tool, Search uh, Windows 10 ISO download on Google or click the link in the description. Then click the download tool now button. Take some time to load. After it loads, be sure to click Create Installation Media. This will overwrite all of the contents in the USB drive with the Windows installation. Make sure that the settings are right for you. Usually just clicking next will be fine. Then choose your USB drive. Remember, all of the contents in the USB drive will be erased. So make sure you don't have any important files on it. Then click next and it will start downloading. It will be a long process. I have already done it. So I won't be going through that for now. So, now that we have our USB drive ready, let's boot from it. Now we get to the fun part. Connect the USB drive to the PC you want admin rights over, and we'll be booting from it. To enter the boot menu, turn the computer on, and you have to press repeatedly the button for that particular PC or laptop. In my case, it's F8, so I repeatedly press F8, and it will show the boot menu. On some PCs it may be F2, it may be delete, it may be F12, it may be escape. Just try it out and see what works. When the boot menu shows up, choose the USB drive that you have the Windows installation in and press enter. If, however, instead of a boot menu you get uh, a BIOS password prompt, to work around that you have to remove the internal motherboard battery. Open up the PC or laptop and you'll find it on the motherboard. It's a circular battery. Remove it for 40 seconds until the BIOS password resets. But beware also all the BIOS settings are reset to default and also the time will, of the PC will reset. You remove it with a flathead screwdriver and leave it for 40 seconds until the BIOS password is reset. Then reassemble the PC. Okay, back to booting from the USB drive. It will take some time, okay? After it loads, we will be greeted with the Windows setup. Press, don't click next or do anything, instead press Shift F10 on the keyboard. When you press it, you'll notice that a command prompt comes up. Type Notepad and press Enter. And then click File Open and you'll see that you will have access to all the files in the, on the PC. Make sure that you select all files. Click this PC and choose your system drive. Usually it is local disk C. 
In my case it happens to be the D drive. Double click Windows and scroll to find System32 and open it. In System32 there is a file called Utilman. Press right click on it and rename it to Utilman2. Then press F5. Scroll down and find another file named CMD. Right click on it and press copy. And then right click on anywhere in the folder and click paste. Press F5 again and right click the copy and rename it to utilman in order to replace the original file. Press F5 and now that we have made our changes we can reboot our PC. Close all the windows that are open and when it asks you to cancel the installation click yes and your PC will reboot. Disconnect the USB drive at this point and just leave it to boot normally. After it boots up, click the Ease of Access icon. On Windows 10 it looks like this. You will notice that a command prompt shows up. This is because in the background it is running Utilman, which we replaced with the command prompt. One special property of this command prompt is that it is running at system privileges. So basically now we have full control over the system. Fun fact, instead of Utilman we could have also replaced SetHC and to activate SetHC you press shift 8 times in the password prompt. But we don't need to do that as usually Utilman is more reliable. What we want to do is grant ourselves admin access. To do this we write netplwiz in the command prompt. And it will show a dialog and click the advanced tab and then click advanced. Click groups and double click administrators and click add. Here if you know your exact username type in the username and click check names. But an easier way to do this usually is to click advanced then click find now and find your username from there. In my case it is VirtualBox and double click it and click OK. If your PC is connected to a network and somehow it's not finding the users from the network, make sure that the PC is connected with using Ethernet to the network to make sure that it has full access to the users on that network. Click OK and then apply and then OK. So we now have successfully given our user administrator rights. Let's say for, for the sake of this example that I also forgot the password of my user. What I do is I click Ease of Access, write Net User, and it will show all the users that are registered locally on the system. After I find my username, I write Net User, my username, and then my, my new password. In this case, it is one, Pass123. One After I press Enter, now I can log in using the password pass123. Login is successful and I can open Google Chrome and download Steam to celebrate and I can play all day long. If it worked for you be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If it did not work Leave a comment down below and we'll try to resolve this together. Thanks for watching.